I call this area the hub of the universe. I mean, I could live in Perth. I'm still a Maddo boy who spent all his life in Matraville and Maroubra. It never leave me, it's in my DNA. I grew up in Patterson Street, Matraville. My family, until just recently, had a house in that street for well over 60 years. And it was just such a, a wonderful place to grow up as far as sport, school, and it's really tight. If you come from here, you know all the people that live here, and I love it. What we didn't know back in those days was that we're actually living in a very toxic environment. There was an oil refinery on the way out to Lower Perouse. There was Bunurong Power Station there, which was still operating at full capacity. The paper mills was there. There was a chemical factory called ICI. And we didn't realise in those days, but that was heavy pollutants. Uh, there was pollution going into Botany Bay. There was plumes of chemicals going underneath in the groundwater, which we didn't know, but that's being dealt with now. You didn't think about it in those days. Certainly think about it now, because for decades, the local community, the local government and the state government, and I suppose in some ways the federal government, have spent decades and a lot of money cleaning all that up, moving the heavy industry. Then I hear they want to build an incinerator at Matraville. Like, huh? Isn't that a backward step? Isn't that going back to where we were decades ago instead of now moving forward? I just don't get it. So I'm saying right now, no incinerator in Matraville, not where I grew up. So Suez is proposing to build a waste incinerator uh, that will burn 165,000 tonnes of selected waste or what they call process engineered fuel. Basically all the dry components of our curbside collection as well as some industrial material. Part of that 165,000 tonnes is waste from the paper mill, about 35,000 tonnes. And that's the waste that is actually extracted when they're recycling the cardboard. It's all the plastic tape and the labels and the uh, strapping and, and covering uh, that can't go through and can't be made into new cardboard. So they've got to find somewhere to get rid of that material. So 35,000 tonnes of that 165,000 tonnes is going to be burnt in the, in the waste stream. And that material uh, will inevitably contain chlorinated materials like PVC. And when chlorinated materials are actually incinerated, they create dioxins and other chlorinated pollutants. And these are persistent. They stay in the environment. What we've been exposed to does not break down. So what happens to them? A portion of them are actually put out in the stack gases. They have a series of filtrations which filter out all the soot and all the stuff that you can see, but there's still very, very tiny particles called nanoparticles which carry pollutants into the air. And these very tiny particles can carry the pollutants directly into your bloodstream. So we're standing here today breathing in the air. We'll breathe them in, they go into our lungs and then they cross what's called the blood-brain barrier. And then we can actually get those chlorinated pollutants into our bodies. Our bodies can't get rid of them, so they will stay in our bodies. The, the stack that's been proposed at the moment um, is at least 65 metres high. Uh, the reason that stack is so high is that they're trying to get the pollutants high enough into the atmosphere so that the prevailing wind will actually carry the pollutants away from the populated area. The question is, is how soon does that plume hit the ground? And it's quite soon. And the plume plot that was be emitted from this incinerator uh, travels over to Kurnell and then back up to Bondi, as well as west. So basically the plume will travel wherever the wind blows. You can't stop it. Within one kilometre of the Matraville incinerator, we have over 5,000 people that will be exposed. Within five kilometres, we have over 110,000 people that are going to be exposed. And within 10 kilometres, we have over 580,000 people that will be exposed all of the Sydney area is going to be affected. I live in Marina Avenue. Marina Avenue. How far away is that from the uh, proposed paper mill? I, I, I could throw a tennis ball that far, put it that way. Whether it was Port Botany, whether it was the paper mills, whether it was ICI, they never stopped. You'd fight one thing and then you'd put your feet up for five minutes and then there'd be something else you're fighting for. We have a responsibility 
for the children that are growing up in this area and what we leave them. And if we let this go ahead, we're neglecting our duties as parents and, and elder people in the area not to do something. Well, we moved here in the beginning of 2008. We knew about the area for a while and it's you know quite family friendly. Everyone sort of knows everybody in the street. Everyone mixes with everybody. So we thought if we're going to start a family, this is the street that we're going to start it in. Within this street, there's a couple of other, there's a couple of young kids that are severe asthmatic. So the minute we have a little bushfire or there's a bit of smoke coming from some back burning or anything else, they're in the children's hospital quick smart. So I'd hate to see what would happen to them if this incinerator goes up. What I don't get is it's not just in our area, it's going to affect the whole Sydney Basin. We never had things burning around here. That's the problem that worries me. If they want to light something, it's going to affect the whole area. And I am concerned about that. The people come first. And I reckon that remember what happens in this area right now, it's going to come from the people first. To have a 17 storey stack, 130 metres away from someone's backyard, those residents don't deserve that. They've put up with a lot. Could be up to 100 trucks a day, just bringing waste that's gone all the way from us to Eastern Creek and then bringing it back to burn, which doesn't make sense. All that travelling, so the roads will be clogged. There'll be extra trucks. We've already got enough with the port. It just doesn't make sense that an area so, so metropolitan as Sydney would have this incinerator burning 24-7, 365 days a year, and at the same time gives nothing back to the community, absolutely nothing. I don't care what people say about what this was and where we live, this is a backward step. There's people that live 130 metres from this incinerator. We're standing in a park right now that's 100 metres from where this place goes. I'm looking in the playground here and there's mothers with their children and dogs in the playground. Now if this thing's burning, and they're burning all sorts of rubbish. This is not particular stuff, this is plastics and PVCs and recyclable stuff that's gonna get burnt. And if the wind's blowing this way, the invisible pollutants are gonna be landing on those children right there and their mothers. Now, I just don't get that. I don't get how it's got this far. That I'm standing here where I grew up saying, please don't put an incinerator in the area where I live. I can't, it's bizarre.